Hello guys, hello, hello, hello. Hello Rick, hello Cynthia. Welcome guys for this Cast Iron Live. A little bit early today, just want to make sure that we're here on time. Once again, hello to Rick and Cynthia. And today we are talking about Stargazer. I know a lot of you guys like Stargazer. Alrighty, we're going to wait just a minute before we start about two minutes ahead of schedule. Hello, Billy Lee Lahone. Good to see you. Hello, Rick. Hello, Cynthia, once again. Alrighty, guys, we are, like I said, we're about two minutes ahead of schedule. Um, not a biggie. But as you guys can see right here, we have the box for the Stargazer, the 13 and a half inch uh, brazier. I figured, I don't think anybody has featured this um, on YouTube or I, I don't believe anybody has made any videos on the uh, brazier. And uh, it's a two year and a half, technically almost two year and a half in the making. I think it was back in 2021 when they announced them so 21, 22, 23, so two years and a two years and a couple months. Actually, I think it might have been just two years. Uh, I think it was around the, uh, what is it, like October, November time frame that they announced the Brazer where you could uh, pre-order yours. And they were supposed to release in 2022, March of 2022, but they had some, uh, some issues. I'm just glad that we, you know, uh, we got it. Wyoming Yeti says, hey, my brazier is sitting in uh, UPS jail. Wow, that, that is terrible. I've had that happen to me before. Uh, who else do we have in the chat? Uh, Wyoming Yeti, hello. Mercy B, hello. Good to see you. Jimmy Linkford, hello. Mile High Diva, hello. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're, we're going to be taking a quick look at the Star, uh, Stargazer Brazer. That's actually a tongue twister almost. almost. Star, Stargazer Brazer. Stargazer Brazer. Actually, no, it kind of flows. But anyway, we're looking at the thir 13 and a half inch Brazer. And uh, this one here, I ordered this one bare. So I didn't get it seasoned. I can't, th that's why I can't use it today. So today it's just unboxing. And have you, having you guys take a look at it, uh, see what it looks like and the size and all that. And we can actually uh, do some measuring, give you guys some measurements of that. Let me go see if I have my... I used to have my little measuring tape around here. Let me go see if I can grab it before we start. But bear with me, guys. Let me uh, grab everything that I need and we'll, we'll get going. guys so hello everybody thank you guys for showing to showing up tonight for this live i appreciate everybody taking the time to come and uh, watch the live i i appreciate your time believe me i know that you guys have a lot of things to do especially during the weekdays a lot of you go to work um and as i mentioned it is a privilege to be uh here and also uh sharing with you guys this unboxing so with that being said, I want to do a quick uh, roll call here. Hello to, once again, Rick, William Hurt, Billy Lee Lahone, Cast Iron, uh, oh, Honey Badger, uh, Cynthia, once again, Val's Black Cat's Rules. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, Dorothy, hello, good evening. John S., Wyoming Yeti, Mile High Diva, Jimmy Langford, Mercy B. Thank you guys for all showing up. If I missed your name, don't think that I don't want to say your name. Who else do we have? Chris McGee. Thank you guys for showing up tonight, this evening. All right, without further ado, as you guys can see, 
once again, this is the 13 and a half inch brazier, two years in the making. Uh, these were available to pre-order back in, uh, I want to say it was October or November of 2021. We are in 2024 and I just received it. So two years in the making. Uh, I'm just happy that uh, they did manage to get them to, you know, our hands. I, I'm happy they managed to pull through and and uh, make the brazier. So, uh, as I said, very happy with the Stargazer. I do love Stargazer. Uh, the only thing that I, that uh, one thing that I will say about Stargazer is that they polish their surface very, very smooth, similar to Smithy. But uh, I haven't had any issues and um, I love my Stargazer. It has performed exceptionally well. But without further ado, let's take a look. This one is the Bear. Uh, the bear one has not been seasoned at all pre-seasoned as you guys can see here bear or seasoned and I chose to go with a bear uh, this is what we get in the box and it's fairly lightweight guys uh, it's not as heavy as I thought it would be made in the USA what else do we have that's about it all right let's get into the unboxing All right, so you guys are presented with the uh, brazier in a plastic, which I do like. They always ship with a plastic and that's always uh, a plus in my opinion. Prevents it from getting all that dust uh, while in transit. But uh, let's take it out, let's see it. One thing that I will say is that I feel like it has been packaged really well. I don't think that there was there will be or can be any damage unless you know whatever carrier they use wants to throw them under the under the trucks or something and they get run over then yeah you might not have a working skillet but other than that that's about it in the box actually did i see yeah, that's about it they don't have anything else in there so i haven't even seen it yet i i got this yesterday in the mail and all I did was just uh, tear open the, the uh, what do you call it, the packaging tape. And that was it. I, I didn't take it out. This is the first time that I look at it uh, with you guys. So this is the first time that I get to see it as well. So reactions will be uh, live. I haven't seen it either. But very, very lightweight. Holy moly. Yeah. I like that. It's not heavy at all. So I might even consider weighing this just so that we can see what the weight is on this. And uh, just so you guys can see, a little rubber band right there. Pull it apart. And there we go. All righty. There it is. We're going to save the bag. Save that for a, another use. Recycle. Put that on the ground. All righty. Uh, Let's take a look at the uh, use and care really quickly, guys. Uh, getting started, if your, if your skillet is bare, which mine is, it is coated with mineral oil. Wash it with soap and water. Then follow our full seasoning instructions before use. If your skillet is seasoned, it's ready to be cooked in. Uh, use extra oil while, uh, while when cooking in a new skillet. Uh, so they do recommend that you guys add a little bit extra of, uh, oil or fat, whatever you guys like to use, wh whether it's lard or uh, olive oil or whatever oil you guys like, make sure that you use a tiny bit more than you normally would just so that you break it in. But to break in your new cast iron, we recommend baking cornbread or brownies, sauteing vegetables, onion, asparagus, or shallow frying chicken egg rolls. It's funny because I do all that. <laughs> I And I love doing all this. Uh, cornbread, brownies, onion. That's typically what I do with mine in the first. So actually it's a very good, um, very good tip there. Uh, your seasoning will change color and may look blotchy as it develops, but will even out and darken with continued use. Very true. Uh, what else do we have? Cook. Preheat your cast iron to ensure even heating. Promote nonstick cooking. We recommend three to five minutes on low heat before turning up the temperature or adding any food. Correct. And just so you guys know, I do have a gas range. But uh, for the longest time, I did have a, um, I did have a uh, electric stovetop, and it was a glass stovetop, and uh, always start at a low, never start at a high. Start at low, and always preheat low, 
medium, medium high is the highest I would recommend. And if you're going to be searing steaks, guys, uh, medium, medium to medium high is more than enough. I never go full blast on the knob. I've never done that. And if you do, you run the risk of cracking or warping your skillet. So I don't recommend ever cooking at the highest uh, that your uh, knob can go. But anyway, uh, use a burner that closely matches the size of the skillet. Yes, acidic ingredients like wine and tomato sauce can be rough on the seasoning. If you do lose some seasoning, no problem. You can easily touch it up later. Correct. And a lot of people say that you shouldn't cook any acidic, uh, acidic ingredients, but I've had no issues. Um, I think it was American America Test Kitchen that uh, they did a uh, almost a, like a test with uh, cooking, I think it was a tomato sauce or it might have been deglazing with wine. Anyway, they noticed that if you go over 30 minutes with, uh, you know, maintaining uh, any kind of acidic ingredient in the pan for more than 30 minutes while it's cooking, then yes, you might get that transfer. You might get that taste leached into your food, that, that metallic taste. But other than that, um, I've had no issues and I've done a lot of uh, acidic ingredients with my, my cooking. Let's see, clean. Allow your skillet to cool, yes. Never uh, run any hot water or water while your pan is blazing hot, it will crack. Uh, place it in the sink under hot running water. Add a small amount of gentle dish soap if you like. Scrub away food debris with a soft sponge or dish, dish brush and rinse thoroughly. Avoid abrasive cleaners and scouring pads. Dry your skillet immediately and completely. Place your skillet back on low heat for a few minutes to be sure it's dry. Yes, that is all correct. Seasoning, I think most of you might know. But um, yeah, that's that. What else do we get? We get a sticker, which I'm happy because my sticker is, uh, I've used it a lot and my sticker is wearing out. I placed mine on my uh, flask, my hydro flask drinking water. And uh, oh, this is a really cool sticker. So happy to have one of these. Now guys, I think we're gonna move on to the important stuff. And I'll be looking at the chat in a minute, but let's look at the, uh, the pan itself. Now, I don't know if you can tell, but I haven't even removed it yet. And there looks to be like a bit of flash rust here. Not exactly sure, but I'm, I'm hoping that it's not. Not a big problem. We're still going to clean it. So you can see a little bit of, you know, imperfections here and there. I'm hoping that's not flash rust, but we'll see. And typically they do not come covered with uh, dual plastic bags. It's usually just one, but this one, oh man, it smells terrible. <clears throat> I just got a big chunk in my mouth. But anyway, these uh, usually don't come with two plastic bags. It's usually just one. But as I said, this one is not seasoned. So they do add the, uh, this, uh, you know, additional bag to uh, prevent it from rusting, but great looking skillet or dual or brazier. Um, it is missing, I'll say it, uh, you know, a lid. I do hope that they produce a lid for this, uh, hopefully by the end of the year, <laughs> but we'll see how that turns out. Let's see. Uh, this one dates 10, 17, 23, 10, 17, 23. So I think mine's one of the first ones, 10, 17, 20. So that's what you read. The month, the day, and the year, 10, 17, 23, just for those of you that might want to know. And yeah, um, overall, I love the handles. The handles are nice. The handles are the same size as the, uh, the ones that are, are placed on their skillets. So very, you know, similar feeling, very similar dimensions, nothing crazy there. But uh, let's give this a quick measure. Let me wash my hands. As you, as you guys can see, there's a little bit of rust or whatever that might be, but I'm gonna wash my hands real quickly. Clifton Floyd says, Peter says lids are coming soon. Yeah, yeah, and actually, um. I, I do know that they're 
coming out with lids. I'm just hoping that it's going to be soon. Um, th that brazier will do more than well with the lid, but um, we'll see when they decide to uh, bring those out, hopefully soon. Alrighty, uh, let's get some measurements on this, guys. So, from handle to handle, for those of you that might be interested for your uh, pizza oven, we're looking at 17 and a half inches. Handle to handle. Same thing on the diagonal here. And the rim to rim, 13 and a half. So that is very true. They are correct on their uh, measurements. 13 and a half inch. That's the lip. So one end to the other. The inside cooking surface, we're looking at about 10 and a half. Well, no, actually, we could probably go a little bit more. Let's see if we can go a little bit more. We're looking at 10 and 3 quarter inches on the cooking surface. And then the depth. Depth is very, very nice. Two and a half. Two and a half inches depth. The base, if you guys want to know, let's flip it real quick. If anyone interested on the base, the bottom portion is about 11 and a half inches. If there's any measurements that you guys want me to take for, for whatever reason, let me know and uh, I'll do that for you guys. But uh, let me grab the scale. I have a scale and uh, we can weigh it and see what it's coming in at. As I said earlier, I don't know if it's just the handle design, but it's very easy to pick up and maneuver. So I'm very happy with that. It doesn't feel heavy at all. Alrighty guys, I got my scale right here. Give it a quick uh, weight. And uh, we'll see what, it, what it's coming in at. And, uh, and then I'll check the uh the chat oh my uh sister-in-law is in the chat naomi hello all right so let's see we're in grams let's do pounds here we go guys so this guy is coming in at seven pounds 5.2 ounces and i'll move the uh, camera here so you guys can see what i'm seeing seven pounds 5.2 ounces. I would say that is very lightweight considering the size. So anybody interested in looking for a 13 and a half inch cast iron um, pan or brazier, this one is something you should take a look at. Alrighty. So weight wise, um, I think very fair. Let me grab, I have a 14 inch uh, lodge. I No, I don't have a lodge, actually, 14-inch. What do I have that's a dual handle? I, I don't think I have a 12-inch dual handle from lodge. So I can't really compare it to lodge. Who else do I have? Who is there anything that you guys would like me to compare it to? I think I might have a 13-inch uh, skillet from lodge. I don't know if you guys want me to test that. But uh, let me read... Uh, quickly here some uh, some of the comments and see if you guys have any questions Move you guys down just a tiny tad Sorry guys Do not mean to be moving you guys left and right Alrighty, let's see. I'll let me take a look at the chat Mm, yes, uh, if, if anybody's asking, this this is bare. It has not been seasoned. I will be doing the seasoning later tonight, and I'll post uh, a quick video of that just so you guys can see. Obviously, seasoning does take about an hour or so. I can't be, you know, having you guys here while I'm I'm. It ha it's in the oven. There's no action going on. And uh, but what I wanted to do was just showcase it, talk about it. And uh, I want to know what you guys think about this. Uh, so let me know any questions. What do you guys think? Is this something that you guys would purchase? Uh, retail, I think it goes for 175 or 185 Let me check. Actually, let me uh, get the proper information for you guys. Stargazer. Let me look. Up. There we go. All righty. Actually, it goes for $195 U.S. dollars seasoned. Now, if you want to go bare... 
It is a bit cheap. Well, actually, no. Same price. Bear or season, same price. So uh, if you guys if you guys want to skip the uh, the process, you can go seasoned, or if you want to do it yourself, go with bear. I I went with bear because I've never done it before, and um, I want to see how well my seasoning does, my seasoning methods uh, do and fare, you know, with the uh, standard stuff from uh, the manufacturer. Alrighty, so let's see. Uh, if you guys want to order this, they are shipping in March 2024. For the new orders, your card will be charged at the time of the order. Uh, it's a 13 and a half inch brazier. It features a wide base, shallow sloped sides, and two short handles. It's ideal for oven roasting, shallow frying, braising, and open fire cooking. The cooking surface is machine smooth for nonstick performance, just like our skillets. Correct. Uh, we offer our cookware in two finishes, seasoned or bare. Our seasoned skillets have been have have already been seasoned by us with two coats of oil blend made of canola, grapeseed, and sunflower oil. Uh, the bare skillets are dipped in mineral oil to protect them in transit. Just wa wash off the oil and season it however you like. Dimensions, uh, which is true, 13 and a half inches. That's the rim diameter cooking surface. Uh, 10.8, which is about the 10 and three quarters that I mentioned. They're saying a little bit more. Uh, total length, 17.3 inches. I think that's what I mentioned. Actually, I mentioned 17 and a half. So uh, they're, they're a little bit off, I want to say. Uh, total height, 2.6 inches. Depth, 2.5. That's what I said. Capacity is 4.9 quarts or 19.7 cups. The weight, they're claiming it to be 7.3 pounds. And as you guys saw, it's not 7.3. It is 7.5 so just uh, some information there. And every skillet will vary because uh, every single one is going to be different. They might machine it a little bit more or, or something, or they might sand a little bit more material off yours than mine, perhaps. So mine is at 17, or I'm sorry, mine is at 7.5 in, uh, in weight. But uh, yeah, for those of you that are looking for something similar, or if you guys are looking to purchase one, then uh, they do have it, and uh, you will receive it around the March or springtime. Alrighty, so once again, let me see. Do you guys have any questions? I'll be taking a look at that right now. Balance Black Cat's Rule says, uh, any milling on the pan? No, you cannot see the milling, but yes, it was milled, so it is very thin. Uh, you know, I wish I had one of those gauges, but I don't, I do not. But just so you guys can see more of a close up here. Um, this has been sanded all the whole, you know, uh, brazier itself does get touched up and you can see, I don't know if you it catches it, but you can see right here, not much has been done. You can see a little bit of that, but the machining looks very very good but they also hit it with a uh, grinders and and polishing wheels and then they add a micro texture to it so that um, seasoning can can adhere to the pan itself that way it's not completely polished so there is some you can feel it it does feel it feels it feels like sandpaper like a very um, like a wet sanding sandpaper. So yeah, there is a, and this is the first time that I feel it. So yeah, the, now that you mention it, you can, yeah, it feels rough. Not rough to, you know, something that's like extremely rough. No, something that feels like, um, like very fine sandpaper. But yeah, and they also, they smooth the bottoms, they smooth everything out. So everything is completely flat. So the bottom here, very, very flat. Let's see, what else? Uh, any other questions? Handsome Stone, how smooth? Very, very smooth. The uh, outside also very smooth. Um, there isn't very, there is no roughness to it. Uh, just so you guys can hear. You guys can turn up the volume. I will be uh, running my finger across so you guys can hear. So do your best to listen if you can. 
there's that. That's the outside. And then we'll take a look at the inside. And that was my nail, just so you guys could. And here's the outside with the nail. So yes, very smooth. Billy Lee Lahone says, I prefer naked. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'm excited for this because as I mentioned, then I get to do my own seasoning without having to build on top of theirs. And I feel like I might have, uh, I might, I don't know, have better results. We'll see, I'll let you guys know and I'll keep you guys posted. I'll see, I'll let you guys know how the seasoning does after I cook with it. But uh, I will most likely give it about four to five coats before I start using it. So just so you guys know that I will give it a fair amount of coats, very thin, and I do like using the, um, usually, I and I tell everybody to use the Jeff Rogers or Culinary Fanatic um, seasoning method, and uh, it's one of the best ones, especially for those of you that are new to seasoning. Uh, if you guys haven't seen his video, go see his video. It's on YouTube, Culinary Fanatic Seasoning Guide, and uh, his is phenomenal. So with that being said, I will give it about four to five coats and then I will start cooking. And then after that, I'll keep you guys updated with everything on this uh, for those of you that are interested on that. <laughs> Naomi says, thank you for the ASMR, which is my, my sister-in-law. You are welcome. Let's see, what else do we have? Rick says it's like Butterpat's cousin. Yes, I think so. They do very they do a very good job with their um cookware and very thin walls all around. The bottom is a thicker base, that for sure, so you won't get any warping or any issues whatsoever. But um let me move you guys over here. And that way you guys can see it in better lighting. Sorry for that. Here we go. Maybe up a little bit higher. Sorry, guys. A little bit higher. And as I said, let me know what you guys think. Is this something you guys would consider or not? I mean, the price is a bit expensive, I'll be honest. It was a lot cheaper if you or you know pre-ordered back in 2021. Oh, my niece, my niece is saying, uh, you should do ASMR more often. Yes. Uh, yeah, actually, and if you guys like, I could show you guys another one, another typical like a lodge, the difference, but I think most of you might know the difference between a uh, milled or smooth pan versus uh, a lodge. A lot of people have lodge or use lodge, so most of you know the difference. Billy Lee says, can you show up a uh, close-up? All right. There is no milling, um, like milling marks, like on, on the surface at all. You can see a bit, and that's what I'm noticing, a bit on the sidewall. Let me see if I can lift that up for, for you. There's a bit that you can see on the sidewalls. You can kind of see the lines there. The milling lines on the uh, sidewalls here, but they, yeah, you do not see very much, you know, the mill marks or the milling marks on this. As I mentioned, very smooth and they do micro texture it. I want to say they either hit it with a, um, what do you call it? A sand blaster or perhaps a bead blaster, which bead blaster would be glass or some type of glass. That's usually what they uh, will, will, I want to say that's their technique. I'm not sure. What else? Let's see. Dorothy says, uh, maybe in the near future, Stargazer will offer an eight or a nine inch pan for the empty nesters. Correct. I wish they, I'm hoping and I'm thinking that they will. They most likely will offer smaller pans uh, and I believe it might be easier to produce smaller pans than it is the larger one. So if anything, this is probably the hardest one that they've made so far uh, because of the size. So if anything, I do believe that we'll see smaller ones in the future.
And just so you guys know, I do like using um, Cast Iron Chris, and I don't know if you guys know who he is. He has a really good seasoning compound. Um, the tins are kind of small, and they they are a bit expensive. Let me show you guys. Uh, so let me grab that real quick. So this is technically my seasoning bag. This is what I like to use. Um, I have gloves. I have a little board. Uh, I have these blue shop towels, and then... Here you can see the seasoning compound that I use. And I like using these, these compounds that have beeswax. This one is from Cast Iron Chris, and his compound is fairly simple. Grapeseed oil, let's see if I can, there we go. Grapeseed oil, sunflower oil, locally sourced beeswax. So he has two oils and beeswax. And it works really, really well. This one is near empty, but the paste is very, very soft. Um, if you guys have seen or used Buzzy Wax, I think that one is a bit harder, but this one's super soft, uh, very pasty. And um, the other one that I like to use is from uh, Easy Beasy, which is Stephen Strong. Uh, his, his channel, Cast Iron Cookware channel, he's on YouTube as well. He sells his own, which is this one here, Easy Beasy. And uh, this is the first time that I use this one, actually. Very awesome. I like the packaging and the way the format, everything is. So once you preheat this, you can add a little bit of that uh, seasoning compound and uh, wipe it on and wipe it off. Um, follow the instructions, but you can push here and it'll, you know, one, it'll go up if you like. And then you can just push it down to go back down. So yes, I do like using these. And you just follow the instructions, or as I said, you can follow the uh, the guides from uh, the culinary fanatic, uh, Aaron, or, uh, Chris, I'm sorry, Jeffrey Rogers. My goodness, I was having a hard time remembering the name. But yes, Jeffrey Rogers has a great tutorial. Anyway, guys, going back onto the chat, let's see, any other questions? William Hurt says, thought I might get some beeswax and make my own recipe. Yeah, actually I've heard a lot of people do that. Um, Honey Badger, I think, does his own recipe as well and he has his own uh, seasoning compound. So if you guys are interested, I think uh, Honey Badger might have something if you guys wanna try the seasoning compound from uh, Honey Badger. Billy Lee Lahone says, Luis, out of all the new cast iron, which do you like the best? Uh, my favorite has always been, I, you can't, I mean, it would be, I, I would say the top three, if I had to, I can't just name one, but top three would, one of those would have to be Lodge. So one of those is Lodge. The other I would say is, um, uh, it's just, it's, it's so close. Butter pat has to be another one, even though it's very expensive. Uh, and right now they're in the transition of ownership, but butter pat was one of them. Uh, Lodge butter pat so far. And then the third one would be, it's a, it's between fine X and field. And a very close would be Lan Lancaster. Lancaster is very, very, uh, their design similar to vintage cookware. So if you guys want a throwback, uh, but something new, Lancaster is your is your one. But I think Finex brings a lot of innovation in the sense that it's different. The spring coil handles, stainless steel handles, those are awesome. The you know the octagonal shape, pretty awesome. Heavy weight, um, and it's not necessarily you know smooth all throughout. It's just the cooking surface, which I do like. I do like the rougher texture on the edges. Um, Field Company is just, I you know you can. Uh, there's a reason why they they made uh, over a million on Kickstarter. It's an amazing pan. If you guys haven't tried Field Company, give them a go. Uh, they have a lot of amazing stuff, but. Uh, Stargazer, I, yes, I'm sorry, Stargazer. It's not on the top three, just because it's uh, they have they have a smaller selection of cookware. It's the the number twelve and the ten and a half, 
and this one now. They don't have a large selection. I think once they start building up more and they start adding things, uh, things might change. Let's see. What else do we have? Cynthia Wesley says, favorite brand, bougie number eight, or number eight, 10, and 12. I would say vintage. I would say BSNR, number one, BSNR. Uh, Lodge, I can't, you know, I can't get away from Lodge. And as much as I love Griswold, it's not on there. Uh, the other one that I like a lot is, because I feel like not a lot of people use it uh i would say um martin stoven range i like martin stoven range but it's harder to find all right let's see anything else guys uh anything about the pan i will as i said i will upload a video on the seasoning guide for that so so you guys can see but for now i just will talk if you guys have any questions let me know Let's see, I'm going to go back to some earlier uh, questions. Let's see. Dorothy said, do they offer an 8-inch pan? No. Cur currently, they only have, as I said, a 13-and-a-half, a 12-and-a-10-and-a-half. A 12 and a 10 and a They're looking into adding uh, lids and some other cookware they haven't mentioned yet. Handsome Stone, did you pick up the Black Lock? Yes, I have a lot of Black Lock. Let's see, what else? Hello, Jeanette. Good to see you here. Good evening. Uh, let's see, what else? All righty, guys. If you have any questions, let me know. Other than that, we're going to move on to the other uh, Stargazer portion of the video, which is going to be talking about their other um, or their updated uh, pans that they're going to release. So I'm uh, currently helping out Stargazer with uh, a little bit of their production with their current lineup. So I'll show you guys in a minute what I mean by that. William Hurt, what do you think of it not having a lid? I think that given the size of this 13 and a half, I think a lid was a necessity and they should have included it with the with the pan. Um, as I said, given the size, this is perfect with the depth. This is perfect for brazing. That's exactly what it is. It's for brazing. And what do you need to braise? You need a lid. Uh, you need something that's going to trap the, the moisture, something that's going to lock in the flavor and uh, not dry out your food so if you're going to if you're going to do long cook a long cook or a you know slow roast typically you want to cover it you want to you know avoid all that moisture in the in the food to evaporate into the oven or wherever you might have it but yes a lid would have been perfect and i think it would have made this even better uh, that's the only downside is that there is no lid available for this from the beginning and we waited two years i mean it might sound like a rant it might sound like i'm being uh, nitpicky but i do believe that if you are going to offer something uh, like this i think the lid would have you know knocked it out of the park but stargazer was having issues with their production and obviously took two years to get it out so uh, you know i'm just hoping that they can get the lid out by the end of the year at least that and I'm not, you know, hating on Stargazer. No, they're still a great brand. I still love them. And I will highly recommend, especially because their prices are still uh, one of the lowest ones for the elite uh, category of modern cookware, modern cast iron cookware. So if you're looking for, a, you know, something that's milled, something that's been polished smooth, then Stargazer is the entry level. That is the uh, least expensive. The 10, I think, is a... How much is the 10? Let me see, actually. Let me give you guys proper numbers here. That way we're not guessing or, you know, I'm saying things that are not true. The 10 and a half, let's see. The 10 and a half starts at 125. That is the cheapest. Uh, behind that was Field Company. But Field Company recently uh, 
had to raise their prices. So uh, Field Company used to be at 150 or 140. Uh, not the case any longer. I think they're at 180. Uh, Smithy also, I think, starts at 180 or 170, 175. Uh, but yeah, Stargazer 10 and a half inch skillet starts at 125. That is the cheapest for the polished or machined made in the USA. Blacklock uh, starts their 10 inch starts at $60. Uh, it is not polished smooth though. It is not milled. It is just, they do polish it in a sense where they put it in a tumbler that has a bunch of pebbles and they, it gets rid of the roughness, but the, uh, the pebbly texture is still there. Uh, it hasn't been CNC machined or, you know, any of that nature. Um, but as I said, the, the ones that are that are CNC machined, this is the cheapest. Ten and a half is at 125 uh, And then if you're looking for a bigger pan, the 12-inch uh, skillet goes for 155 So very reasonable prices considering what most of the competitors are priced at. So just just so you guys know, that's why... I will always recommend also Stargazer. Val's Black Cat's Rule. What will be the first thing that to make in the new toy? I really wanted to uh, I wanted to braise, but as I said, there's no lid, so I'm gonna try and find a glass lid for this thing. Or maybe I have something in my inventory uh, that I might be able to use, but if not, um, Maybe fry. Maybe fry some food. Uh, that might be the first thing that I do. Maybe some uh, drumsticks or... I was thinking about doing some uh, beer, brad beer battered uh, fish. Like fish and chips. So it might be something similar to that. I might do fish and chips. Uh, what are you going to use for a lid? Yeah, I... I um, hopefully, I can, I can find something. Mile High Diva. Is there a Dutch oven in the works? Um, I believe so. They haven't necessarily said anything, but I do believe that there is a Dutch oven in the works. They have said that the lids are, are currently in production. Not production, but uh, they are considering uh, bringing those out sooner than later. William Hurt says, it's not a rant. Brazers all have lids. Correct. I, that's what I believe as well. Uh, Rick says, uh, I've been on Peter and the crew at Stargazer for a cool minute about lids. Yeah. Uh, Honey Badger says, I bet Lodge has a glass lid that would fit it. How big is the inside radius again? The inside radius, so if, if anything, it would be touching here. We're looking at about 12 and a half, so, or 12 and, eh, 12 and a half, I would say, would still possibly work. 12 and a half would be the uh, smallest. So I might have something that might work for it. Uh, definitely has to be glass, though. I might consider buying a, uh, going to the store and buying a 12-inch um, glass lid for the lodge. I don't have one. Uh, I do have a 12-inch, or I'm sorry, a 10 and a quarter inch uh, glass lid for a uh, lodge. But I might consider getting a bigger, uh, you know, or one of the glass ones. Jimmy Langford says, I'm looking for a number six Martin hamburger logo to complete my set. Yeah, oh, I love those. Those are, the hamburger logo are my favorite skillets. Vintage. Rick says, baked cornbread or fried potatoes and onions. Yeah, actually, that sounds like a good idea, too. Alrighty, guys. So I'm going to move on. Um, I think we've seen this enough. Uh, and then I will show you guys the uh, what I'm working on with Stargazer, just so you guys have a, an idea. I don't think they might get upset. I'm hoping they don't get upset that I share a little bit of information with you guys. Bye. We're just going to move that one out of the way, leaving a bunch of uh, mineral oil all over the place. Not a big deal, but uh, I'm sure that it has to be food grade, or maybe it's not, but either way, let me bring over the other ones. All 
Alrighty guys, so, uh, don't know if you guys can see that. Let's see. Sorry guys. Anyway, here we are. We have three stargazers here. They're all 12 inch. Uh, this one here has not been used, it's brand new. Uh, these are the testers that I have, and uh, how do you know it's one of my testers? Well, uh, it has a number two here ascribed into the handle. So this is number two, and these are the testers. So what they've done is they did a certain degree, I want to say, of uh, bead blasting perhaps, a degree whether it's more or less, and they want to see which one fares the best. So uh, that might be something that they might be doing. Now, am I 100% sure? No, I, I am not 100% sure that's the new method that they're doing, but um, they are they want to know if the these methods are going to help the seasoning because obviously there's a lot of feedback about how the seasoning was not able to adhere to the pan or after some time the seasoning would just flake off so uh, they're concerned with that and they want to address it so they shipped this one these here these skillets as i said this is a tester this is my number two this is the one that i'm going to go to next this is one that i've already tested and you can see here the discoloration it's fared decently, not the best. This one is number three. So I, did, I started with three first. You can see that there, that one's a three. So, and I will be returning these, so I'm not keeping these guys just so you guys know. Um, but yes, uh, they have a little bit of casting flaws, not, I think, or I believe, but they are, as I said, um, asking me to do some some testing on these so uh as i said I, I don't think they'd get upset if i share some information so they reached out and uh they told me if they could ship me three items for me to test and they wanted to do um, well let me see if i can actually find the, the actual conversation so you guys know what i'm talking about so that way i'm i'm not saying things that i'm i shouldn't be saying all righty here we go uh this was back this was back some time ago but uh, they wrote morning luis uh my name is leah and i handle the social here at stargazer stargazer uh, along with a few other things including production development which is why i'm reaching out uh, we know you have a vast collection of modern and vintage cast iron so we thought you'd be a great person to reach out to and see if you'd be interested in helping us with our latest project We've been seeing some feedback on social uh, media about our surface finishing seasoning. So we thought we'd make a few changes and get some real world feedback on said changes before making any permanent changes. Uh, and if, I, if you're open to it, we'd love to send along three skillets for you to get a few cooks in, maybe three or five. Uh, we're not looking for crazy cooks. Just use it as normal, and we'd ask for your for you to provide feedback on each version after giving each one a few cooks. Uh, if we move ahead, we'll send out three skillets, which they we did. But that was uh, pretty much the gist of it. So each one is a bit different, and uh, this one here is their number one. So they are all marked, and as I said, we're going to be testing these. And I've already got some cooks in this one. I've heavily used this one, actually. And uh, I haven't done much with the other ones. So uh, I've got one down. I got two more to go. And uh, I'm going to be helping out with their, possibly with their finishing on the seasoning. So, or I'm sorry, on the cooking surface to get better seasoning per, uh, performance out of their um, cookware. Now, I'm not going to say here and be, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm the one that's putting in all the effort. No. No, no, Stargazer is doing their thing, you know, and I applaud them for um, addressing all the issues that they've come across. So uh, this is why I can get behind a company like this. They they want to better their product. They want to do real world testing and for them to reach out is uh, is an honor. So I'm very happy that they did. And uh, in no way am I going to take, you know, the, their um, all their hard work. Stargazer uh, deserves all the hard work. They've done a great job. And uh, as I mentioned, that is one of the reasons why I will always endorse 
Stargazer. Not just because they sent me the products. Um, as I mentioned, they are. Sh I have. I am shipping this back. They are not going to stay with me, and I don't get anything per se. Uh, you know, um, they did say if I wanted a T-shirt, they would send me a T-shirt, but I think I already have one of their T-shirts, so not a big deal to me. I'm more than happy to help out. So with that, guys, what do you guys think? Um, this isn't a paid advertisement at all, nor is this endorsed at all by Stargazer. I'm just throwing that out there in case YouTube or anybody gets any idea. No, none of this stuff is endorsed or sponsored by Stargazer. This is something that I do for the channel, for the viewers, so that we can get honest uh, uh, reviews and honest um, you know, a look into the cookware itself. So you guys have any questions let me know we're going to be about about done here we're going to be closing up soon so if there's any questions let me know guys cynthia says do not leave any stone unturned correct i'm doing my best to uh, put these through their paces and see which one does the best but you can tell that this one has been used uh, these are still bronze and this one is no longer bronze Mouse Black Cat Rule says, chicken strips and pancakes for trial. Uh, actually, I've done a very uh, large amount of uh, protein, but I've also done acidic ingredients. That's why there's some stripping going on. Uh, I wanted to see what was going to happen with their, with their seasoning because technically that's what they want to know is how their seasoning is going to hold up and uh, whether the, you know, one is going to fare better than the other in the, in the fact that they're finishing i think or they're i actually i might not even know it might be the seasoning compound that they might be using but if anything it could be the the finishing whether as i said it's the degree of the bead blasting that they're doing or or the oils that they're using so could be both or none of those <laughs> but anyway yes strong's adventure says i really approve of luis's stove Yes, uh, I love this stove, but sadly, actually, you know what, since we're going to be closing up here, uh, I want to throw out some news. Um, so Rick, Rick already kind of, I, I did mention to Rick, since uh, we are, I want to say good friends because we do message each other on uh, social media. I haven't met him yet, but I think I will one day, or I'm hoping that I will soon, uh, meet Rick in person, but Anyway, I, I did tell Rick that uh, there was some news coming along. One of them was this, and the other was that uh, I might be uh, moving once again. So my uh, it's funny because a lot of people say that I'm a gypsy. I just like to move around. And, you know, they don't say it to be uh, offensive or anything like that. Um, the person that told me was uh, a friend. But uh, I've been I, I've moved in the last... Uh, maybe six years I moved a total of three times so far so uh, we might be moving again and this place I just moved into um, just so you guys know I will be clear this is a uh, it is a uh, somewhat of a townhouse uh, not necessarily a uh, it is a like a condominium somewhat okay they are condominium style so they do have a garage uh, they are two stories um, and, uh, this one was just recently remodeled and, uh, my, my wife had a little bit of input into the, uh, into the remodel. And, uh, since we got a screaming deal on this stove, uh, we decided to put it in. It is a 36 inch stove, but, um, we might consider something else. Uh, we might be moving and, and moving to a home of ours. So I might be purchasing a home. We don't know yet. But uh, that's the big news that I might be uh, finally purchasing a home for myself. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I've been, you know, uh, doing this for roughly three years. And uh, all these videos have been out of this, you know, out of a, um, not my own home, but out of my uh, apartment, I guess you could call it. And, um, you know, I'm excited to move into my own place. That way I can have more outdoor cooking videos, more Dutch oven cooking, um, and things of that nature. So a bigger kitchen as well, uh, and things, uh, things like that. So I'm, I'm excited and I'm hoping that soon I might be, uh, in a new place.
yeah so um yeah just so you guys know and and down the road uh, i'll tell you guys more about that so right now i don't know much just because it's in the uh in the process Strong's Adventure says, I'm sure all of us would like to be to be not sponsored or endorsed just to be able to play with some of the nice pieces. Yeah, I got to I got to ship them back and I have my own and I'll show you guys. Actually, I'll bring out my my own skillets. Uh, actually, I have some some cool little tidbits that I haven't showed from Stargazer. I have some crazy stuff from Stargazer that I've just kind of kept because I haven't really thought about what to do with it. So. Um, but anyway, I'm going to show you guys the, uh, cool little, uh, or not necessarily cool, but different things that I've come across that are from Stargazer. So bear with me while I go grab that. All right, guys, sorry for that, but I'm back. All righty. So I came across this piece online. And uh, it is, from what I can tell, an unfinished Stargazer. You can see there's still mill marks on this guy. So I'm very happy about this. The only downside about this piece as I said, it does have the mill marks still, is that they did not finish it. So I'm thinking about doing that, giving this a, you know, a, a sanding. So I might sand this, but it's super rough. So if you guys are interested on how these look when they come out of the mold, yeah, they are like sandpaper. I mean, this texture is extremely, extremely rough. But um, yeah, so even the handle, you can tell. That is some rough, rough casting. Now, I'm not sure exactly why this guy never got casted. Maybe he, it was a reject. Um, but someone listed it on eBay and I, for an extremely low price, and I jumped on it, and I didn't realize how uh, rough the casting was. I figured I could do some work with it, but I haven't even touched it yet. It's a project for the summer. But, yeah, uh, it doesn't even have a date on it either. So not exactly sure if this was um, something that they just kind of thought of doing and they never did, or maybe one of the early pieces, not sure. But I like the milling on this. And as I said, I, I'm not planning on throwing this away or, or getting rid of it. I am planning on uh, doing something with it. So um, perhaps a project for the summer. Strongest Adventure says, leave that thing alone. Yeah, I might leave it like that. That's why I haven't even touched it. So that's just, you know, that was a thought that came to mind whether I should do something with it or not. But as you can see, there's some a little bit of rust buildup. So uh, that's why I haven't really messed with it. So I'm going to wash my hands real quick. And then I'll show you guys my, uh, my skillets and how they fared after. I think I've owned these for over two and a half years. So close to three years now. I want to say about three years. My 10 and a half inch and the 12 inch that are right in front of you guys. So, and, and as I said, I've never had any issues with my pans. Um, like the seasoning hasn't flaked off. It's just, it's been stripped off by the, the food, but not to a, a, you know, to, it's only been to a certain degree. Cynthia says, I love the roughage of the outside. Better for handling. I promise in seasons, beautifully. Yeah, no, I, I get that. But this is like extremely rough. It, it, it does need to go. I think this is, you know, like 
a lot of people say, oh, Lodge, Lodge doesn't do anything to their pans. No, no. They pass it through that tumbler that I mentioned that has a bunch of stones in there. Um, and that actually, you know, pretty much eats away at that roughness. So there, it is smoothed down, even though they don't polish it like you can see here. But anyway, that's, uh, you know, something else. But anyway, this is my Stargazer that I've owned for roughly two and a half years. Almost, actually, I want to say about three years now. And as you can see, very dark and seasoning is splotchy, not the best. We got more, you know, darker spots here on the top, but um, nothing crazy. So I think uh, it's fared really well. And the seasoning, as I said, has not been an issue for me at all. So I love this one here. This is my 10, 10 and a half inch. And uh, this was from uh what is this 2 11 21 so that was the date this one was casted 2 11 21 so yes i did get this in 21 22 23 24 so yeah about three years now I'm three years old soon it's going to be that pan's birthday and then shortly after we got i got this one here which also i i want to say is looking pretty darn good so this is my pan here the 12 inch and um, I have no issues with these. Stargazer has always done a great job. Every time I've cooked food on these, I've got no sticking at all. So I do like that. Food glides like they're on, uh, on, on an ice rink. So it's like a hockey puck, which is something that I like. And this one, let's see the birth date. Uh, six, so June 2nd, 21. There. So yeah. This one, about three years, and this one, close to three years. And as I said, no issues with the uh, Stargazer. So if you guys are interested, very cool um, design. I like the handles, uh, especially the helper handle. Even though the edges are a little bit sharp, not a problem. They still manage to do well cooking. I have no issue with that. So if you guys have any questions, let me know. And if not, then I think we might call it a night. Hopefully you guys found this somewhat entertaining. And uh, as I mentioned, look forward to the uh, seasoning process of the 13 and a half. I will be uploading a video most likely tonight. A quick short just uh, showing you the, uh, the process. And as I mentioned, if you guys have any questions about seasoning, uh, follow uh, the Culinary Fanatic. I like his seasoning guide. He has one of the best ones um, and a, lot, and a lot of people like his uh, seasoning process. So with that being said, what do you guys think? Any other questions? Let me know. Cynthia Wesley. My goodness. Why do you give Rick D such a hard time about his, his skillet that he repaired? He sent me a picture of that thing too. He got, he got a skillet repaired. The, the handle was broken right here. And uh, they got the skillet repaired, so. But Cynthia over here, uh, they're really good friends, and they like to mess around. So hopefully no one thinks that uh, they're being mean to each other. They're not. Billy Lee Lahone says, I would leave it like it is. Yeah, I think I will. I might just add a little bit of oil just to keep it from rusting. Um, but other than that, I don't think I might do anything to it then. Might be just a keepsake. What seasoning am I going to use? I'm actually going to use this one here. So I'm going to use the um, Easy Beasy. And again, I'm not sponsoring, but uh, Steven from uh, his channel, uh, Cast, Iron, Cast Iron Cookware, uh, he has he's selling this stuff, and um, he has very, very good knowledge of Cast Iron Cookware. And if you guys have any questions, he also has seasoning guides as well, and I like his product. I've used this before, but... It was hard to get. Now it's actually on Amazon. So if you guys are interested, you guys can get this same size. You can see it's about yay big. Uh, you can get this one on um, on uh, Amazon. It's about 3.8 ounces. So pretty cool. Once again, not sponsored or anything. Just, you know, I'd like to shout out the, uh, the, uh, the people that have done a lot for the community, the cast iron community. So shout out to you, uh, Steven. We're doing such a great job. 
Alrighty, guys. So with that, I will see you guys next week. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. As I said, once again, make sure you guys tune in for the uh, quick short for seasoning of the uh, brazier. Anyway, hopefully uh, you guys have a lovely weekend. Stay safe, everyone. Uh, and uh, I will catch you guys on the next live. So uh, I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye now.